Pastor's Day, I was uh, sharing about uh, God's kingdom in heaven and on earth. And then I talk about uh, Satan's defeat when he tried to dwarf God's purpose and plan. And so the Bible say that Satan is come to you and to me. So this evening we need to understand what does the Bible, the word of God tells us that Satan is come on earth to you and to me. The church is to be a light and a salt on earth. Because in heaven, God's will and plan is forever settled. God is sitting on the throne, ruling and reigning in heaven. Even the angels who does not submit to God, they are kicked out of heaven. They are called fallen angels. So as far as heaven is concerned, there is no issue. But today, I want to show you that on earth, Satan wants to influence you and me against the plan of God, against the kingdom of God here on earth. In fact, Jesus said, if I, with the finger of God, cast out okay, these demons, does that literally mean Jesus took the finger of God? No, no, no. It means Satan cannot influence you and me when Jesus has come into our lives. The influence of Jesus in your life and in my life is greater than the influence of Satan. And because Satan knows his time is running out, so it is not causing the person to sin against God. It's more than that. If Satan can get the person to do their own influence, because there is only one kingdom, and that is the kingdom of God. So today, the lust for self, because I've shared with you that in the book of Job say, skin for skin, that means self for self. And today in a world that you and I are living, the carnal flesh always wants to be lifted up, self for self. We are to promote Jesus and not ourselves. But if we are not careful, we can use Jesus and promote ourselves. If we are not careful, then what it is, we have fallen into the influence of Satan. Because Satan told Eve, if you eat, you are going to have your eyes open. You will know good and evil. You'll be like God. So Satan is encouraging today's humanity about yourself. And if there is ever a generation today that harp so much on themselves, is this generation. It is about me, but using the name of God, and that is even worse. So we need to get this truth and this understanding. We are to promote the kingdom of God because when we pray, we pray, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven already. The kingdom of God is settled. But today the kingdom of God is come to you and I, Jesus said. 
And so we need to remember, do not think so much about our lives, preserving it, promoting it. But rather, we think about what Jesus has come to promote the kingdom of God because Jesus said the kingdom of God is come to you and me. Christ's influence must come. Okay? The devils today are dedicated to hindering God's will. And how does they do that? And that is a self for self kingdom. That's what they are promoting, a self for self kingdom. Today, people are anxious about Russia, about America, about China, and about North Korea. So what do we see? Even the influence that Satan has upon this worldly kingdom, promoting themselves. When they do that, they are fulfilling Satan's purpose. Because that's what Satan wants. Satan do want kingdom of God here on earth. Satan wants to create chaos. And so Satan influenced them to promote themselves. And even today, the churches, Satan has got them blinded. That they are promoting themselves rather than Jesus and the kingdom of God. So we need to realize today Satan influenced them to lift themselves up. Okay? Satan knows that when the vessel of people do that, he has stopped God's influence. And he remained free to go unpunished and do his will and spread the murder, the thievery, the fornication, he desires to spread. So the influence of the kingdom of God today here on earth is upon the church. That's why Jesus said what? Let your light so shine. We are to be the salt of the earth. Okay? And thank God that Satan is actually a tool to perfect God's church through his mad desire to destroy God's work by way of persecution. Apostle Paul understand the truth. When you and I go through persecution, we are not to be afraid. In fact, we are not to run away from it. It only makes us stronger in promoting the kingdom of God. We will not concede to the tactics that Satan used, and that is persecution. Okay? So we want to talk about today that we are safe to shine against darkness. We are saved to shine against darkness. Let me read to you Judges chapter 2 in the Old Testament. Judges chapter 2 in verse 6. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. 
They buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timna Heris, in the mouth of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill of Gash. Verse 10, and all that generation will gather unto their fathers. And listen to this. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. You see the influence when Joshua and all the elders were alive. They were the influence, okay, to the children of Israel, to the younger generation. Okay, he says, verse 10, that all that generation will gather unto their fathers. But then he turned around and said, there arose another generation after them, which knew not the law. So what happened here? All right. That means to say that Joshua, when he took the children of Israel across the Jordan and then into the battle, after battle in the conquest of Canaan, the promised land, and Joshua's mission is to set a launching point. Okay, Joshua set a launching point for them so that each tribe could finish their job assigned to reclaim the territories for themselves or the 12 tribes. So during Joshua time, they have success. In fact, they conquer six nations and 31 kings. This is in Joshua chapter 11. Because Joshua put the Lord first in all that he did. He did not try to conquer Canaan himself, but he helped the Israelites to get to the point where each tribe, they would be able by faith to reach out, to conquer their own land. And for this reason, we can see that they were on the right track. But then there came another generation that was influenced not by what they went through the wars against the enemies. In fact, this generation was too easy to comfort. He says here, cost nothing, worth nothing. There's a saying that goes, when it costs nothing, it's worth nothing. That means in life, anything that you receive, which costs you nothing, you won't appreciate it. But when you work for it, then you take much care about it. And so this generation, it didn't cost them any battles, anything. The result is that they forgot the Lord because it cost them nothing. Their faith not, was not activated to the, the trials of, of battles against the enemy. Joshua worked for God in his time. And he expected each believer who wanted the promised land to do their part. In 2 in second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, this is what he says. As Christian, we have to take heed to the word of the Lord and realize that we are living in perilous time. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 in verse 10 says this. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should we eat. So this is a very strong uh, 
warning from Apostle Paul that those who did not work, they should not eat. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, chapter 5, verse 18, he says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Okay, first eight, uh, 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 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. That means to say the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. God wants every believer, every Christian, to be busy in promoting his kingdom. Joshua did a great job for the Lord in verse 7 uh, of Joshua tells us. So the people served God while Joshua was alive. And Joshua has seen all the great works of the Lord. And he shared his testimony of victory with those around him. His testimony led others to trust in and obey the law. And this brought unprecedented victory. The people also served God when the elders that outlived Joshua were alive. The influence is so important. Again, these elders who served with Joshua, they saw how God has been faithful and God has helped Israel overcome impossible odds. God fed Israel with manna, provided them with such as they need. But then a new generation drifted from the testing and the trusting of God. We must never allow the good influence from God in our lives. That means to say, you and I today, we need to be influenced by those who have a good testimony. Not to be influenced by those who are carnal, who don't have a good testimony. Who don't promote the kingdom of God, but promote themselves. You see, today it is not about you, it is not about me. We all know that. It's not about us. It is about the kingdom of God. But then how do we go about the kingdom of God? And that is, we must die out to ourselves. We must give God the glory. We must promote his everlasting kingdom. The faith that says, believe that God is, as he say he is. The faith that blesses must diligently seek him. For God blesses those who shine for him. So we've got to ask ourselves this question. Am I shining my light for Jesus? Or the darkness of the world has crept into my life and deem my light. And this is so important. When we come together as God's people, we do so to encourage one another. That's what the Bible says, to share how God has given us victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. It tells us that, that we come together as believers. Okay? And it is to build our faith. It's to build our faith. Because faith is a substance of things hoped for evidence of, of things not seen. In Hebrews chapter 10, in verse 23 to verse 25, said this, let us hold fast 
the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. Verse 24 say, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. You see, it goes hands in hand. If you love the Lord, you will have good works. If you promote the kingdom of God, you will have good works. If you have a good testimony, you have good works. And so it is so needful today that you and I promote because we love God, we must promote not ourselves. But we must promote the kingdom of God. Verse 25 say, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another in so much more as you see the day approaching. And we cannot emphasize, we cannot take this too lightly. Today, Christian, many are fallen asleep because they are thinking, oh, the world is still the same. Tomorrow is going to come. But Jesus said, lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. We can see today the world powers. We can look at America. We can look at Russia. We can look at China. And these are signs. And we must not be Christian that have fallen asleep. It will come suddenly. It will take you and me by surprise. So while it is still day, we must put on good works. So what is the good works? Promoting the kingdom of God. Okay? You cannot hold fast your profession of faith if you are not working together with believers. You, your light must shine. When we come together, our light must shine. We must promote the kingdom of God. It's just like you bring one candle. We have seen eh, people when they hold candlelight, uh, Virgil, out in the darkness, in a park. So one fellow will light up one candle two candles, three, four, five, six. The next thing you have by the thousand. It's a bright light. A thousand candles started with one. And it shine. Darkness will flee. Even from the sky, when you look down, it is a bright light. One candle might not make the difference. But if you have a thousand, it makes a lot of difference. And this is where God said, let your light shine. So when we come together, people need to see Christ in you. People need to see Christ in me. Let your light shine. This is where we must plant the gospel seed while it is still today. Tomorrow might not come. You know, always remember the Bible talks about redeeming the time. So if you want to enjoy the fruit of your labor, you must plant now. You don't procrastinate. You don't say tomorrow, next week, I'll wait for good weather, it won't come. You do it now. So when you plant the seed of faith, it's going to sprout out and grow. You don't wait for tomorrow. You act now. You know, a lot of us, one way or the other, we have some procrastination in our life. We procrastinate, we put it off. I have learned to overcome these weaknesses. Whenever I see that something needs to be done, I will do it. 
because I know if I put it off, it's going to be put off again and again, and, and it will never get done. And that is not my habit. If I need to get it done, I get it done today, not tomorrow, not the day after. Why? Because the Bible say it might not come for you or for me. There is no promise tomorrow might come. So while it is still today, you need to plant the seed of faith. Amen. Okay. Judges chapter 2 verse 10 say, And also all the generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. So what happened here? Why is there another generation that do not know the Lord nor the works that God has done for Israel? I'll tell you why. There was no influence. This generation obviously did not care. They were influenced by the affairs of life. They did not take serious thought about God, what God has done for Israel, from Joshua to the elders, they did not. And so the Bible says, why didn't this generation have a knowledge of God? Because God's people got comfortable in their faith. So today I pray, the day that you started, until now, that you will not get comfortable in your faith. It's a very dangerous thing. You know, right now, countries that is near to the Arctic, like Canada, you know, uh, Europe, they are going through a freezing weather. Okay? So in a freezing weather, everybody, especially if it is strong, heavy snowing time, they hide in the house with near their fireplace or they put their heater on. Nobody fool around outside under minus 10, 20, 30 degrees Celsius, freezing temperature. Because a very dangerous thing will happen to a person when he is outside freezing temperature too long, he will go into a deep sleep called hypothermia. He will become comfortable. The coldness has caused him to become comfortable. He will fall asleep. In fact, he will be asleep of death, frozen to death. That's what it is. So today, Christian, if we are not careful, our faith, we go into a spiritual hypothermia, too comfortable. We will fall asleep in our faith. And then also the influence of uh, not telling their children about Jesus, about what God is doing. And this is where the generation, another generation do not know God. We know in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to verse 5, this is what the Israelites were supposed to do. The same thing with you and I today as parents, we need to teach our children to worship God, to praise God. Tell them the story of your faith, of what God is doing. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And then verse 7 says, And thou shalt teach your children, thy children, the word of the Lord diligently. See, a lot of us, we fail in verse 7. We fail to teach our children the wonderful things God has done. 
And the result, this new generation will not know God. We need to teach our children to pray, to give thanks. We need to do that. But instead, we are not influencing our children and they come to church, they don't even worship God. They play on their handphone. Or they do not know God because we allow that to happen. Okay? We need to let them learn to be on fire for the Lord. We must teach God to the new generation. We need to tell them to shine for the Lord. The other meaning of did not know God is that the people deliberately refuse to acknowledge God's authority. Okay? And Romans tells that they know from nature and that it is God to praise him, they won't do that. All right? They thought it is by their own strength, it is by their own self that they got what they want. And today, there is such a generation. They are self-sufficient. It is all about they themselves, they can get it. And this is where uh, we must break away from what we call Easy believism. That means the belief cannot be easy, comfortable, cannot. We need to shake out of that. There is no such thing as comfortable faith. There is no such thing as easy faith. I'm sorry to tell you. In fact, the Bible say what? You have to fight for it. You got to fight the good fight of faith. If you do not fight a good fight of faith, then I'm sorry to tell you, your faith is very comfortable. And when you are very comfortable in your faith, you will be in hypothermia. Spiritual coldness is setting in. You are going to die in your faith. Okay? In Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, again say, biblical faith is only one generation away from extinction. That means to say, if we do not pass it to the next generation and the next generation to the next generation, then that generation is not going to know God. And who is to be blamed? You and me, we are to be blamed because we never pass it on to the next generation. Okay? It is evil for us not to follow God. It is evil for us not to follow God. Judges chapter 2 again in verse 11. Judges chapter 2 in verse 11 say, The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and, say, and served Baalim. In verse 12, they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt. And follow other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them. And bow themselves unto them and provoke the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Asteroid. So there is a parallel, parallel uh, uh, happening okay, about how the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, okay? How they forsook the Lord God of their father, which brought them out of Egypt. So what happened? That means to say Satan was able to influence them, forgetting the experience of the forefathers, of the elders, what has happened? The next generation did not get to experience. They did not get to be reminded that hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. 
And so today it is so important that you and I, not only we shine and promote the kingdom of God, but also to our next generation. We are accountable. There is a responsibility. We are our brother's keeper. May I make it this way? We are our next generation's keeper. Because the next generation rely on you, rely on me to know who is God and what Jesus has done for us in, on Calvary. They need to know that. And it is sad today that there are young people, they do not know what is Calvary, what Jesus has done. And who is to be blamed? You and I. Because we never teach them. We never tell them. So we are one generation from the extinction of the apostolic faith. Okay? And why they did evil? Because they know not God, the enemy or the devil is able to bring the world to death. Go ahead, eat of the fruit. You are going to be self. You're going to promote yourself. You're going to rely on yourself. By your strength, you can make it. And this is what is happening today. The Bible say what? The just shall live by faith. And who it is that is justified, we are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. So you and I, we need to realize today, we live, our justification is Jesus. Not because we are so smart, not because we uh, have the capabilities, uh, we are able to work our way up. This is where you're wrong. Our eyes should not be on the people in the world. You know why? The people in the world don't even know whether tomorrow will come for them or not. And the Bible gives a story about a rich man. Okay? He did not know that tomorrow will not come for him because his time is up. And so God wants us to uh, to pray on earth as it is in heaven. We all know that Moses came representing God under the law and that the people will not listen. And today Jesus came representing God under grace and yet the world will not listen. Okay, but there is going to come the day where the Bible says God is going to judge okay, the quick and the dead, so to say. In Jeremiah chapter 9, and I will read in verse 23, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. Thus said the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. See, here's the warning in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. God already warned the wise man in his wisdom, <coughs> the mighty man in his might, the rich man in his riches. So what is it in the world today? We have wise men. Wise not in God, but wise in the world. We have mighty men. Mighty not in God, but mighty in the world. We have the rich men, not rich in God, but rich in the world. Verse 24 say, but let him who boasts in these boasts and that he understand and know me that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, righteousness on earth. For in this thing I delight, declare 
the law. So, so what does this mean? It means today you and I, we are promoting the kingdom of God is love, justice, righteousness, peace. Okay? This is the kingdom of God. So when we promote Jesus, we are promoting that the kingdom of God here on earth. We need to forget about the wise man boasting in his wisdom, the mighty man boasting in his might, or the rich man boasting in his riches. We need to don't allow that to cut us off God. But when we promote the righteousness of God, the peace of God, the love of God, this is where God's kingdom has come on earth. And you and I, we can serve uh, God in his kingdom. The Bible describes the cycle of disobedience that the Israelites follow. Okay, this is what the Israelites, they were not careful. They started with disobedience. They started with not getting the discipline. And then they went into despair. And then they were crying out to God for deliverance. So throughout the book of Judges, we do not see Israel gaining any new territory. The same thing with the church. The church will not gain any new territory until the people, they must learn not to be comfortable in their faith. They must fight. Fight the good fight of your faith. Okay? And uh, in the end, the Bible says God was against the children of Israel, because they transgress the covenant of God, they have not hearkened to his voice, and the result is that God allowed the enemies, okay, to uh, conquer them, take them away as slaves. So you and I today, we do not one sin to overcome us. We do not want that. When we do not want sin to be our master, we need to live our lives fighting the good fight of faith by promoting the kingdom of God to be done. Kingdom of God to come in your life and in my life. All right, because that's the prayer. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Let us all pray today, knowing that we are saved to shine against darkness. We are saved, every one of us. So today, if you ask yourself, what am I saved for? To be comfortable? To live happily ever after? Uh, to be able to go to heaven? No. We are saved to shine against darkness in this present world. Because why? The prayer is God's kingdom need to be here on earth as it is in heaven. And the only way it is to be on earth done is you and me promoting his kingdom. His kingdom is peace, joy, righteousness uh, in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm.